Hello, Jeb Zwerink here. Welcome to Science Faith Connection, the segment of our show where we look at important scientific discoveries and see how they point to the truth of Christianity. Today, I'm joined by my friend and uh, a good colleague, uh, Dr. Michael Strauss, and we're going to be talking about particle accelerator searches for dark matter. Mike, it's good to have you here today. It's always a pleasure to be with you. So this is a kind of a topic near and dear to my heart. I, I uh, am involved in searches for dark matter, only we're building balloon experiments to put up on top of the atmosphere and looking for exotic particles. Uh, I know you do stuff that is related to dark matter as well, particularly your searches over at CERN. Why don't you give me just a couple of minutes, kind of describe the work you do, and then we'll get into the details of uh, what your work says about whether dark matter exists. Yeah, so I work at the CERN laboratory in Geneva, Switzerland, which is the world's largest particle accelerator. We smash protons together at the speed of light and uh, 40 million times a second. And we build these huge detectors to see the debris from those collisions and understand the structure of the universe and mysteries like dark matter that we don't know anything about yet. Well, very good. I, I, I have to say, anytime I think about what sort of detectors you guys have built, just the scale of them and the fact that you can do that level of detection at that time scale, it's really pretty phenomenal. Uh, so tell us a little bit, what is, how do particle accelerators play into our search for dark matter? What are they trying to find? Well, you know, we know that dark matter interacts with regular matter by gravity. We see the effects of it in things like galactic rotation and um, gravitational lensing and things like that. But the idea is that maybe they also interact with regular matter in other ways. And so maybe we can create dark matter particles, for instance, by smashing protons together. Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared means that mass is a form of energy. So when we smash particles together, we can use the energy of their collision to actually create mass. And one of the things is that we're hoping that maybe we'll actually be able to create these fundamental dark matter particles and then detect them in our big particle detectors. So presumably in these big collisions, this isn't gonna happen very often. It seems like you have to sort through a lot of data to find the ones you are. What are the signature or what kind of signature do you look for that says, ah, we found a dark matter particle? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, you look for nothing actually. And so what do I mean by that? Well, dark matter doesn't interact with regular matter very often. So when the particles collide, we know that, you know, we have a whole bunch of protons going one way and a whole bunch of protons going another way, and they have equal and opposite momentum. So their initial momentum is zero. And since momentum is conserved, um, when they collide, the final momentum of everything we create should add up to zero technically in the plane perpendicular to the collision. We call it transverse momentum. And if we add up all the momentum or all the energy in that plane and it doesn't add to zero, it means that there's something that escaped our detector undetected. And, and that one of the options of those things that might escape the detector undetected would be dark matter. So for instance, if we had a whole bunch of particles go this way and nothing go that way, we know that something must have recoiled the other direction, we call it missing transverse energy. And that tells us or infers that a particle goes there. Now there are, there are particles that we know about that actually go through the detector and create this missing transverse energy, uh, particles called neutrinos, which are part of the standard model. And so what we would look for is an excess of these kinds of events. And there's actually multiple ways to look for dark matter in our detectors, but that missing transverse energy or lots more events than we expect with that would be one signature of possibly dark matter. So in all of the, the particle accelerations, the collisions that have happened over at CERN and in your work, what, what have you found? Have you found any evidence for dark matter at this point? Yeah, if, you ha if we had, you would have heard about it, of course. <laughs> No, you know, so we've done searches, we've written papers on looking for it. And so far, everything that we have observed doesn't give any indication of particles outside those we already know about in the standard model particle physics. In other words, we haven't seen any indication of anything like dark matter beyond what we already know about. 
So what are the implications for that? I mean, obviously, if we found the dark matter, that would just be really cool. I mean, you know, Nobel Prizes awarded, lots of new experiments to try and figure out what's going on. Uh, what, do, what does the state of dark matter searches as far as particle accelerators go? How does that interact with the Christian faith at all? Um, well, that's a great question. That's not usually a question I think I ask myself as a scientist necessarily. Um, for us as physicists, looking for something new is very frustrating. We expected when we turned on the Large Hadron Collider in around 2008 or so that we would actually see many new things beyond the standard model of particle physics, and we haven't. And so we haven't seen dark matter. I think one thing it tells me is that nature is, you know, much more complex and intricate than we hope it is. Whenever we have a simple model of nature, like um, the simplistic module, mo model of supersymmetry, which might actually be a uh, dark matter candidate, we look for it and it's not there. And nature always surprises us. Um, some of the greatest discoveries were things that were not predicted by our model, but were unexpected. And so I constantly am amazed at the creativity of the designer behind it all, because much of what we find is not necessarily what we expect. And, and when, when we find dark matter and, and figure out exactly what particles it is, I'm convinced we will someday, um, it may not fall into any of our models. And, and that may tell us even again that wh whoever's you know, behind it all is much more imaginative than we as humans are. So you're using terms like creativity and surprising. I mean, those are the, the ideas of a mind behind there. You know, the, the, those, those words connote that. What brings you to conclude that there's a mind behind this rather than, well, it's just something big we haven't solved. Give us time. We're going to figure it out. And there's, there's no real God behind it. Well, I don't think those two are necessarily incompatible in the sense that when we figure something out, it may be indicative of a, a creative mind behind it all, right? Um, if I can figure out how a robot works, it doesn't mean that there's nothing behind it. In fact, when you look inside the details of a robot, you would go, wow, this looks like there is something more than just random chance behind it. And this is how I see much of what I do in my field of particle physics. The intricacy and the design I mean, it, it, it's so well put together and it's so much more imaginative than humans come up with. Uh, it, it seems to be like there's something behind it all. Does that guide my research? Well, in some sense, yes, because we expect things to be ordered, right? This is part of the scientific revolution in uh, Western world is that we expected that a um, a god like the Christian god would create an ordered, reproducible world that we can study. And when we do, we find it remarkable. We're in awe of it. Well, thanks. A little bit of an oddball question here. Is there one particular discovery that you've run across in your work that points to that design elegance that says, ah, yeah, that really, I think that's powerful evidence of a creator? Uh, the one I really like is the subject of what we call virtual particles. In, in subatomic physics, particles pop into existence apparently from nowhere, from the, from the um, space-time continuum, really, and then they go away. And inside every proton in your body, there are virtual particles popping into existence all the time and going away. And those virtual particles change the mass of the proton just slightly in such a way that the mass of the proton is finely tuned ultimately to allow life to exist. So if you didn't have particles popping into existence from nowhere, there's a chain of events, which means we wouldn't have life. Who would ever think of something like that? Well, that's a pretty ingenious design, if you ask me. Thanks, Mike, I appreciate your comments. You know, when we do go look at creation, when we study using our particle accelerators, our telescopes, we find that there is this just fascinating world, very orderly, well put together. And the more we learn about this creation, the more it points to the ingenious mind behind it.
you know, if you found this topic interesting and would like to hear more, we'd encourage you to go look on YouTube for our podcast, Star Cells, and God. Mike and I discuss these sorts of ideas and the fine tuning and Higgs searches as well. Great topic to go look to equip you to be able to share the gospel with those around. Go look for Star Cells, and God, episode number 10.